Okay, then I would say, let's start this online training. Welcome to our online training, our film for students, the first part of this series of online trainings, especially for you students. My name is Daniel, and I'm really happy to do this training together with my colleague Praxitelis. Concerning myself, I am responsible at Lubo Software for the customer support. I answer customer questions as far as possible, as good as possible. And I am also responsible for the marketing, especially for the e-learning platform. So we provide a lot of e-learning videos, provide a lot of content concerning civil engineering, structural engineering, and uh, we are responsible for a lot of videos in this section and this part of structural engineering. Yeah, and together with me is my colleague Praxitelis. Praxitelis, when you want to say something. Mm, yeah, sure. Uh, hello everyone, my name is uh, Praxitelis. I am uh, at Lubel uh, responsible for uh, marketing and public relations. Also for um, creating uh, online content, um, for example, e-learning videos and trainings and tutorials. Uh, I will be assisting Daniel today. I'm the second voice you will be hearing. I will try to answer as many questions as possible in the chat so we won't interrupt uh, the training. And the, the, the interesting ones, um, I will tell Daniel to explain it to uh, all of you. So uh, let's uh, jump right in. Uh, I hope you have fun and welcome. Thank you, Praxitelis. Yeah, so as Praxitelis said, we are doing this training very interactive. So it will be divided in different and several sections in chapters and after every chapter Praxitelis pick out the most interesting questions and we try to answer them as good as possible. So, uh, short information about our training tool GoToWebinar. We are using GoToWebinar in order to do this online trainings. First of all, if you do it, you see it like here. So here you have the possibility to show or you hide this control panel of Go to webinar and here adjust your audio settings. So maybe when you can't hear us, please try to change here maybe your boxes, loudspeaker. And here you have the possibility to ask us the questions. Good. Then to the content of this online training, first of all, I will tell you something about the principle of the FEA, so the finite element analysis or also FEM, finite element method. Then I give a short introduction, especially in the user interface of our program RFAM. And then we will model and yes, then we will model a continuous plate together. So this will be the introduction example. And then also doing a stability analysis, in this case, Euler case one, so we will have a clamped column and then a clamped frame. And at the end, you have the possibility to ask us questions. So it will be a nice open discussion together with my colleague, Praxi Telis. Good. Now I will close now my webcam in order that you see, in order to see more. Yeah, and I see one question and yes, of course, you will get the recording of this training and also all materials and models will be included in the email. So in the email, you will find one link and this link will send you to our website and in the website, you find all information about this training, also the recording and also all models and the materials. Okay, so let's jump in. So first of all, the basics of FEA, finite element analysis. So most of the computer programs are based on the displacement method. Yeah, displacement method is a little bit different compo uh, comparing to the force method because 
here are the displacement, the unknown variables. So the analytical solution of structures, of really big structures of buildings is hardly possible. Yeah, For small, simple structures like single beams or continuous beams, it's possible, but the, the more difficult one structure get, it will be really hard to calculate it. So what you can do is that you decompose the real structure into a mesh of finite interconnected elements. Yeah, And at every element or of every element continuum, there are properties which will be described at the nodes. And then the mechanical behavior is described by approximation sets. Yeah. Um, imagine or be sure the finite element analysis is just an approximation of solutions or results. And the most important point is the discretization. So what does uh, what is a discretization? It's a decomposition of structure into finite elements. This is one of the most important steps uh, doing a finite, finite element analysis. So, what, uh, how looks a procedure of a FEA calculation? So, first of all, you determine at local elements the stiffness relations. So, you do a mesh of the whole structure. And then you transform the local stiffness relations to the global coordinate system. And then you assembly or you compose the total stiffness relations to the entire structure. And then you have to consider also some boundary conditions, in this case, supports or hinges or something like that. Yeah. And then the program calculates or determine, determines the displacement vectors. And after the determination of the displacement vectors, you can calculate the internal forces and also support reactions and so on. Yeah, good. So much to the procedure of uh, FE calculation. Good. Now, this will be our first example, the continuous plate. Before we do this continuous plate as an example, I prepared some questions for you. So, first of all, I jump to RFM, the program, and I want to know from you if you work with two monitors, two screens, because if yes, I will adapt my pace, and this would be more helpful for you. Uh, sometimes maybe we should uh, mention that sometimes it doesn't work in uh, full screen. So if not, just exit the full screen and you should be good to go. Yeah, thank you for the hint, Praxitelis. That's maybe sometimes a problem. But yeah, this is the, the solution to the problem. Good. I see most of you have chosen. So I close this poll show you the results or show me the results and i see okay one third of you is using a second screen and uh, the rest of you is maybe i think just watching okay it's good to hear i will adapt a little bit my pace in order to have something for everyone yeah and the rest and i have a second uh, question for you is how many of you or how good is your knowledge in using our program RFM?
Okay, good. I will close this poll. Show you the result. And then we can see, okay, most of you or most of the attendees today are beginners. Okay, this is clear because this is also an online training for, yeah, for students, for beginners, really easy basics. And we will do our best for that. Good. So now I want to show you our family a little bit. So what you can see here. First of all, I create a new model. To create a new model, you can click here on the file, new, or here also to the white sheet. It's both the same. I click here on new model. And here I give the model name continuous plate. Select the right project name. So in order to save it to the right folder, you can create new projects, new folders, and so on. And what's really important is that we choose the right type of model. Yeah? Here we have the possibility to choose one of uh, four different type of models, 3D and 3D2D. And you will see, okay, there are different planes to choose. And for the plate we want to do, we want to model, we have to choose 2D, X, Y, and these fees here, fee X and fee Y, when we, and this is especially for plates who are, who get perpendicular loads. And here, for example, 2D and X, Z, these are, these type of model is especially for frame structures, 2D frame structures, or also uh, planes who are getting parallel loads. And this uh, is for plates who are getting wind loads. Okay, good. But we choose this XY profile here, XY type of model. We don't have to choose any classification of load cases. So here we can choose none so according to standard none but our positive orientation of the global z-axis is downwards so and for those guys who are using different units here you can change the units units and decimal places because i use this program here in germany i decide to use these kind of units so yeah metrical units, meters, millimeters, and so on. And I click OK, and then again on OK, and the work plane will open. Good. So for those guys who are using Orphan for the first time, I want to explain the user interface at an already existing project. So you don't have to do that just see and watch so i open here and the project manager you find it here in the symbol bar and here i open one example rfm this example And yeah, so here we see a you know, very easy, simple structure. And according to that structure, I want to explain you the user interface. So here at the top, you find the menu bar. With the help of the menu bar, you have access to all different options, possibilities to model something and so on. So when you want to add a um, member or a column there just go there 
click on insert so the menu bar insert model data and then members and then you can have that possibility to create different members here yeah the same with loads and so on if you want to do some calculation parameters if you want to set some calculation parameters you find it also here at the menu bar and a lot of other things yeah also some extra tools tables and so on yeah and here on the options so when someone is wondering why i have here the white background and you are using the back black uh, back black background <laughs> here you can change it here uh, click here on the options configuration manager and change here the white background to the back background just double click on the black background in this case because i'm using now the white background and now i have the black background but i prefer the white background so i click back to the white background and i have the white background good maybe also interesting point the program options because we offer here at Lubal uh, 10 different um, languages so we provide we offer english dutch french italian and these other languages so when someone of you is here you can switch the language just close the program and start the program again and um, all program settings are were changed to the right language good under the menu bar under the menu bar you will find the symbol bar and with the help of the symbol bar you have a faster faster and quicker access to the most important functions of RFM. yeah so if i want to create maybe a new single member just click here to a new single member choose this profile and draw some members here yeah the fast access to the most important symbols here of course you have the possibility to modify here your symbol bar just with the right click click here and say customize and then you can do and then then you can add or delete some symbols and so on yeah also with the views you can change something so if you like this view and you want to change to the normal isometric view just click here and the program is shown like that okay now to the navigator the navigator you will find on the left side when someone is when someone don't see doesn't see the navigator please activate it here in the uh, symbol bar and then navigator is divided in four different tabs when i have here the uh, results tab you will see here a fourth tab fourth additional tab but in this case i want to tr uh, i want to start with the first tab so the data navigator so here on the left side you see the data navigator and with the help of the data navigator you have access you have an overview of all existing model data so here in this case for example um, some the materials you are using for this project when i try when i open this tree here i see materials i see two different materials first of all the concrete and then the steel girder here on the right side the same with the surfaces i have an overview of all all existing surfaces and the same also for nodes and so on when i click for example of one node so maybe here to the fifth node here and normally it will it will it will be selected here in the work plane but you don't see the node so good because the nodes are very small so just with the right click click here and say find and then a red arrow shows to the node good and the same also for all other things like cross sections if you click on one cross section 
it will be selected. Good. Um, at the bottom, you will find the add-on modules, short information about all them at the add-on modules. With all them, you can calculate almost everything. So all them provides deformations, internal forces, stresses, support forces, and soil contact stresses. So just these kind of results. But when you want to design something, you have to use our add-on modules. So um, this is a modular structure of RFM. So the main basic program RFM will provide you the normal results like yeah, internal forces and support reactions, deformations, and so on. But when you want to design something, so when you want to see how is how big must be my steel girder, you have to use our add-on modules. Good. But for this training, it's okay when we just uh, focus on these basic things here. Good. Mm, yeah, then jump to the next tab here of the navigator. This is the display navigator. When you want to hide something or when you don't want to show something of this model structure here, you can go here and deselect that. For example, I don't want to see these supports here. I go here and deactivate the nodal supports and I don't see the nodal supports. The same with the loads. Here I can deactivate, activate them. I have also this kind of function also here in the symbol bar. And the same with the results. Yeah. And also when I don't want to see the FE mesh, I can deselect that and so on. Also the numbering, maybe that's for someone interesting and so on. Yeah, uh, one tip from my side, use this colors and graphics according to, and here we can choose um, the cross section, especially for frame structures is very helpful because when you're using more than one cross section or more than one profile, uh, at uh, normal holes, you're using maybe five up to 10 different cross sections. This will be very helpful because you will see now all cross section in different colors. And then you have a really good overview, better overview about your structure. But normally you have this standard and yeah, concrete is grew, have, has the color grew and the steel have this blue color. But if you have more, different cross-section, this kind of information will very helpful. It's very helpful. Good. Then um, the views navigator, if you are using or if you want to have more different views, especially later for the printout report or when you want to um, structure your structure, divide your structure in better parts of uh, of your calculation, the user defined views will help you. So, for example, if you like this kind of view very much, click here, create new user defined view, say, okay, this is my favorite view, click OK. And when you change your, yeah, your the view and you want to jump back to your favorite view, just click here. To favorite view and you jump back to your favorite view. And the same also with visibilities. So when you want to filter some objects, some specific models, I would recommend really this visibilities to use that. So in this case, I want to show only my columns. So I go here, say members by cross section. I know the cross section of my column. So I open this tree here, activate just the rectangle, and you will see just these members of cross-section. Very helpful to do that. The same also with the, my steel girder here, steel beam. Yeah. And now to the last tab. This is the result tab in the navigator. Here you have the possibility to show you different 
results. So I cancel my visibility from yeah, and now I want to show me maybe the global deformation in UZ. So the vertical deformation I see here. Okay, the steel beam here, the plate. Now I jump to the member. So in this case, the yeah, the bending moment is for me interesting. So I see here the bending moment of the steel beam, also of this one here, and maybe also no the normal forces. Okay, interesting. Good. So uh yes, a short information also about the tables. Here in the tables you find also all information of the models loads load cases and so on also the results uh, the one big advantage concerning this uh, navigator on the left side is that you get more information like here in the data navigator so when i jump to the materials here in the tables and to the materials here in the data navigator you will see okay i have here more information about the materials like here in comparison to my uh, data navigator this is one big advantage and you will see it will interact with everything so when i create something in in the tables it will get automatically the same information here in the data navigator so you will see in our frame it's possible to create in different ways to uh, something yeah so not only with the tables not only with the data navigator but also with the symbol bar and the menu bar and so on it's up to you which way of insert of which way of modeling something is your favorite one it's up to you yeah good yeah and now some information some short introduction to the movement of rfm so with the left mouse click i can uh, draw a selection window it depends from which side you begin so when i go from the left to the right upper corner uh, to the right uh, to the right bottom corner i select just the whole things who, who are really within this selection window and now watch when I do it from the other side to the top. So from right to the top corner, it will select everything which is not only in this selection window. Yeah. So also displayed and the steel girder. And here's the difference. Please keep that in mind. Also with the mouse wheel, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. I think that's pretty clear. With the right click, you get every time this context menu. So when you click here on the white background, you get this general context menu. And when you click on one of the objects, you will get that context menu of this object or this model data. Good. Yeah, I think that was everything concerning this introduction. Praxitalis, some additional information, maybe? Um, we've got uh, one question, Daniel. Someone is asking, how can we make uh, this adjustment of the units uh, permanent so it won't change if we close uh, our fem? Mm -hmm. uh, I, you can do it after, you can do it every time. Just go here on the options. And here you will find units and decimal places. And here you can edit your favorite units and cross sections. And then you can save it also. Save as profile. And then when you want to provide that to another engineer or to another person, user who is using RFM, you can he can load this saved profile of these units here. Okay. I think okay. that was a good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then I have 
prepared for you two questions. So first of all, and this one. Good, most of you have already chosen. So I close this poll here, show you the results and say also the right answer. So most of you were correct. So what is a discretization? It's a decomposition of structure into finite elements. And this is the right answer. Okay. and. The last question for this chapter is this one. Okay, I close this poll. And again, the most of you were right. RFIM is a 3D FEA program for calculating members, plates, and shells, not only frame structures, but also, yeah, members, plates, shells, folded plates solids, contact elements, and so on. Good. So, let's begin with our example. So, for that, I jump back to our example, continuous plate. And the first step I do is modeling R. Um, continuous plate. So first of all, I want to show how it will look like. It will look like that, yeah? We will model three different surfaces and then we compare these results with our member, so with a continuous beam. And when you see we will discretize it in different um, yeah, meshes. So we will have different, uh, this different sizes of FE meshes, and this will be very interesting how the different results will interact. Okay. Good. So. First of all, I create a rectangular surface. So for that, I click here, I go to the symbol bar, go here and click on rectangle. And here, first of all, I modify the material. I click here on edit material, or if someone don't have this if someone doesn't have this concrete C3037, go here, edit material, 
and open the material library. And here you have the possibility to choose the to choose to select one of a lot of um, different materials. In this case, I decide taking this concrete. I refer to the normal concrete and to the Eurocode standard. Yeah, I choose the concrete C3037 for the international people there. What does it mean? This C3037. This means that we have a characteristic cylinder compression strength strength of three kilonewton per square centimeter and also a cube compre cube compressive strength of 3.70 kilonewton per square centimeter. Okay, I click on okay. One important uh, point is that we set the po uh, poison um, poisons ratio to zero. in order to have no impact from shear deformation or additional shear deformation, click here on OK. And then we set our thickness of our plate to 300 millimeters. Click on OK. And then we draw our surface 10 meters long and then five meters into the opposite global y direction. Yeah, and for the training, we do the same again, exactly the same again. So again, click here on new rectangular surface. Click just on OK because all information are right. and draw this rectangular surface again, 10 meters long and five meters high or wide. Good. And then I want to show you one big advantage is now we want to copy it. So select everything, draw a selection window above, uh, above the, uh, over the whole surface. Now, click here, have the right click to the surface, and then say move copy. So, and here we say, okay, number of copies should be one because we want to copy it, of course, and the displacement vector should be from there to there. So, now we have two possibilities to enter here a value of minus 10 or that we can pick the displacement vector and I want to show you this option. So select two points and return displacement vector. I click on that, say from there to there and the displacement vector was created automatically. Okay, click on OK, and voila, you will see this where copied, this was copied here, exactly 10 meters higher. Good. Now I want to have the additional continuous beam or a beam. So I want to move that, these three surfaces a little bit. So draw a selection window, over, over the whole three uh, surfaces and grab it, grab the middle surface here at the left on uh, in the left bottom corner and grab it from there to there. Yeah, good. The next point is the creation of the beam there. I go here, create new single member. So in our frame, is it like that? When you want to create columns, beams, girders, braces, and so on, you have all, you 
have to create members in our frame. I click on that. And because we haven't created a new cross section yet, still, we have to create a new one. So go here, create new cross section for member start. And then you have the possibility to set your cross section properties, for example, manually. But of course, you can choose one of these. Yeah, already providing cross section. Here, I decide to take this rectangle cross section. So I enter the value of the width, 1000 millimeters, because I want to relate also to our uh, concrete surfaces here, so concrete plates, and the height is 300 millimeter. The material is, the material is the same. I click here on OK. And again, I click here on OK. And I draw my my member from there to there, also 10 meters long. Good. Now, I press the control key on my keyboard and also the mouse wheel and I rotate it and I rotate my view of Harfen. Yeah. Now I can see that also a little bit 3D. Okay, good. So, in order to provide or in order to calculate it like an continuous plate or continuous beam, we have to divide it also in, we have to divide it because we need an additional line there in order to provide the line support and also here an additional node in order to provide an additional node for the support, nodal support. So, how we can do that? Here, we have the possibility to, to, to divide this line. Click on one line with the right click. It will open this context menu. And here on divide line, we have three possibilities. Graphically, by in intermediate nodes or by distance. I decide graphically. And here I have the possibility to set the steps. Yeah, in this case, 0 0.5 meters are enough. And then when I go over one of this line, I try to I try to divide it at the at the length of five meters. Yeah. You will see when I go through this line, it will change also, it will appear the right value also in the left window box. In this case, I have now x2 meters and here, for example, x8 meters, but we need x5 meters. Yeah. And that you can, and this is one thing or one big advantage. You can do this at every line. But in this case, it's okay when we do it only, uh, only for this bottom line here. And you will see, okay, now we have two lines. And an additional node. And now with the additional additional node, we can draw a line. So go here to the symbol bar, click on new line, and draw this line perpendicular to the other side. Okay, this is one cool thing. And the same thing we do also with the middle surface. Right click on the bottom line or the lower line. Then click divide line. But in this case, I we want to do it by distance. None. Now, really important point. When you, every line and every member has orientation has own orientation. So what does it mean? 
you see here now these kind of arrows. These arrows symbolize me that the starting node is here on the left side and the ending node of this line is on the right side. Yeah, this is very, very important when I use this divide using divide line using distance because here I can set, okay, from which length or from which distance should RFM go to divide this. So when I set here six meters from the line start, it will be, then this new node will be created at the length of six meters from the line start or from the line end four meters yeah it's very important to know that that we have here in our firm this line orientation and also this member orientation and depending on the orientation of these arrows you will see where is the beginning and where is the ending of this line so in this case i want to divide it also exactly in the middle five meters and you will see it here okay now, one cool point is that we can copy one object or different, uh, several objects or um, also uh, another, a lot of other objects with the uh, help of a really nice function. And this is per drag and drop via drag and drop. So I click on one line, sorry, I click on one line, then press the control key on your keyboard and then the left mouse click and draw, uh, draw uh, drag and drop it from there to there. Yeah. The same thing we will do for this other thing. Yeah. Really nice thing. So again, press the control key, click on the object you want to copy and draw it or drag it from the favorite place you want to have it and then left the mouse click and yeah, then you copied this thing here. Good. Now, last thing is that we want to have here also an additional node. Here in this case I want to divide it in another way and the first difference is that we don't have here a line, we divide member. In this case in inter intermediate nodes. So when I want just one additional node I have to create here, I have to set here it as one and this member will be divided in two same long parts. Okay, when I have here two, then the uh, member will divide divided in three same uh, three same long parts, and so on. Yeah, exactly in the half. And now we have it. Good. Now we have to set our supports. For that, you can create here in the symbol bar, new line supports. I click on that and we leave this uh, option hinged here. Yeah, so please choose the hinged. When we go here, create new type of line support. We see, okay, this, this, support conditions are setting that we are transferring just vertical forces uz click on ok and choose the lines here you can also draw a selection window but consider that you do it from the lower part to the upper part, also from the right to the upper corner here, like that. This is possible. Good. Now the same thing for the beam. First of all, I 
choose or I select these nodes here. Doesn't matter if I have also this member chosen. I go here again to the new nodal support. And here I go again to the new nodal support. And now I want to say you something about the support conditions. When I activate here one of these displacements or restraints, this will mean that the displacements in this direction are blocked. Yeah. So in this case, UZ is blocked. This will provide us a support reaction, support forces. In this case, vertical support forces because we are blocking the displacement into the uh, Z direction. You will see it here also in this uh, bitmap here. And keep that in mind that when you want that the support node is carry these vertical or horizontal forces, then you have to activate here this one. Okay, good. I click on OK. And now, one important point, in order not to have here some torsional, um, torsional forces, we have to activate an additional restraint here. So I have to create a new type of nodal support. I have to activate this Vx because I don't want to have some torsional um, movements around the global x-axis so i have to here x i have to activate here also vx click on ok and click on again ok yeah but then it would be possible that the beam here could uh, deform around his own axis and this wouldn't be helpful and this wouldn't be good because then we would get an um yeah an arrow of the calculation of r fan okay good so next thing is adding loads yeah before we add some loads in r fan we have to define first of all some load cases what are load cases yeah load cases can be self-weight imposed loads wind snow loads and so on in order to do that, we click here on new load case. And here we see different action categories, also the load description. And in this case, it's okay when we write here just yeah, test load or something like that. Yeah, doesn't matter. Mm, in order to compare the results better i deactivate the self weight yeah and click on okay good now i put there some loads in this case the new surface load because we have here three different surfaces i click here on new surface load I refer to the global related to true, true area. My magnitude is 10 kilonewton per square meter. I click on OK and choose my surfaces here. The same thing I do for the member. For members, I need member loads. In our firm, there are also some line loads. Please. Keep that in mind, there is a difference concerning these two ones. Member loads are really just for members, like here one, like here, this this is a member, or frame structures, here you have also members, so please use the member load. But if you want to, to uh, put the, some loads on edges of some surfaces, then you have to use line loads. For example, when you want to consider here some wind loads, yeah, then you have to use line loads. 
Okay, good. Here in this case, I use member loads. Click, I click on that. My load parameter is 10 kilonewton parameter. And I draw here as my select joinder. Good. Almost done. Um, now I don't want to show the loads, so I click here on this eye here with the loads. I deactivate the showing of the loads. And now I want to do a discretization. So I want to have different sizes of FE meshes. One bigger, one in the middle, one smaller. And here we leave it like that at the member. So here in the navigator, that the navigator, you will find the different FE mesh refinements. So click with the right click on one of the FE mesh refinement and say new FE mesh refinement. Here you have the possibility to relate or to apply to the surface. And here, please enter the value of one meter, target FE length one meter, and choose the right surface. So I click here, choose this surface, click on OK, and then Again, OK. And this FE mesh refinement will appear here. It uh, is symbolized by this, yeah, by this quadratic window here. And the same thing we are doing for the other surfaces too. So again, here, right click, new FE mesh refinement. Select the right surface and enter here a value of 0 0.5 meter. And here the same thing, but we can do it also in a different way. Right click, F image refinement, new number is already right. Click here and put there a value of 0 0.1 meter. Okay, good. Next thing, our sections. In order to see the results in an integra integ integrated way, we need sections. For that, I create three different sections for the plates. So here, right click in the data navigator, you find this sections with right click i want to create a new section give them a name in this case aa <clears throat> the edge points of sections i will choose so i refer from the one end to the other end i refer just on that surface And the section on surface or the sort of projection direction should be in the global set direction. Good. I close this with OK. The section was created. And this kind of step I will do for the other surfaces too. So again, click here on new section, in this case, BB. Provide here for this one and also the third section. Okay, good. Now we have. We have everything. Now we can calculate it. Yeah, 
So for that, you can click here on calculate all or here on show results. Same thing, when I click here on show results, this window will appear and results from uh, load case one, not found, start calculation, okay. Okay, and first of all, what you see is always the deformation. And first of all is check the deformation if it's okay. And yeah, the deformation looks okay. Here at the member, you will see also deformation when you want to have it a little bit in a better way. So, so the way of showing that Go here to the display navigator and click here also to um, deformation. Go to members and say, okay, the cross section should be colored. And you will see now also the coloring of the deformation of the cross sections. Okay, good. Now, first of all, how we can do, oh, how we can prove our results. First of all, I want to activate the sections here and I refer to the to these kind of basic internal forces. And I activate also this members here, bending moments. Okay, what we can see now. <clears throat> so First of all, we see here the bending moment, first of all, of the member. I think that's pretty clear. We have here field moments, then we have here this negative moment, and here also the same thing. And now, very important point, the different FE mesh sizes. Yeah, Here we have this one meter discretization, here 0 0.5, and here, 0 0.1 and you will see you see okay the bigger one f image size is the the results aren't so exact like here at the very fine f image sizes yeah so here at every 0 0.1 meter one result is provided here on every 0 0.5 meter and here at every one meter, yeah? And please keep that in mind. It's up to you how you will do that because here, look at this one, look at this here, look at this distribution here. We have here linear things. And when you, when you will compare these kind of results with that one, you will get different results, yeah? The results at the specific points, like here at the middle, so here at the line supports, are very similar. But when you compare the results, maybe at one meter here, one meter away from that, you will get definitely different example, uh, different results. Yeah. Good. Mm, this is interesting thing, yeah. And maybe someone of you is asking, okay, why are the internal forces, here in this case, the bending moments, why are they a little bit different in comparison maybe to my hand calculation? Yeah, because in our study, we use our hand calculation. Maybe someone is of you is some formula in order to get that. And normally there should be maybe, you know, some nicer VLUs, I would say. Yeah. So not here, this 31.80 kilonewton meters, but 38.25 uh, 38 kilonewton meters. Yeah. I can tell you what's the difference. The difference is you considering the shear deformations. Because normally, 
here in RFM, when I go to the menu bar calculate, go to the calculation parameters, you see here the activation or the, act, yeah, the activation of shear stiffness of members. What does it mean? Normally, you have also in the reality shear stiffness of some structures. And here in this case of the members, RFM consider that. And when you do some normal hand calculation with the help of some formula, you don't consider that because you calculate it very stiff, so no, without any shear stiffness, because you uh, because the hand calculations say you have endless shear stiffness, yeah. So inf infinite infinite shear stiffness, and but in reality you have some shear stiffness, and so RFM calculate that also with the with the consideration of shear stiffness, and this is also the reason why you get the different she is uh, different different results yeah so please keep that in mind so now watch out when i deactivate that watch out the um, the result of the member i calculate it again And you will see the different result. Yeah. Now you have the same result com in comparison to your uh, hand calculation. And yeah, when you want to when you want to compare your results with your hand calculation, please keep that in mind that you have to deactivate the shear stiffness here in our frame. Good. So much to that. Praxiteles, are there any questions or should we uh, mention something out, strength or um, something? Yes, Daniel, we've got uh, two questions. One is, um, according to what do we choose the number for the um, FE mesh refinement? Mm -hmm. Or the, the, the scale, let's say so. Okay, yeah, it's just... Um, Simplification, I would say, to show you different F image sizes in order to show you how the different F image sizes will re re react to different results. Yeah, If you have two big F image sizes, you will get, um, you will not get exact, not so good results. Yeah. And if you have very fine FE mesh refinements, like here, you will get very good uh, results, but the program needs more calculation time. Yeah, will calculate longer. And normally, um, at least there should be, in order to have, oh, good or normal results there should be in one surface at least so from there to there at least four fe elements then you get normally results they are good enough yeah so when i deactivate that show me just the um the fe mesh Uh, because yeah. you will see okay you have here one two three four five five f elements this is okay yeah but better it would be when you have more than that okay next question maybe mm -hmm. 
Um, we've got uh, the question, what is the difference between line load and member load? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, you have here a member, yeah? This continuous beam, this is a member. In order to add some loads there, you have to use member loads because member loads are referring really to members. But when you want to put some loads on a surface, on the edge, for example, yeah, this isn't a member, so you have to use a line load. Yeah, when you want to consider maybe, um, now I have to look it up this word. Sorry for that. When you want to consider a railing or a handrail, so maybe I show you a picture of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you want to consider something like that, yeah, with the help of some loads, then you have to put the line loads, okay? And this is the main advantage, uh, main difference. Okay. Another question? Uh, no, I think we've uh, covered everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see one question. Oh, okay. This. Um... In my out in my output bending moment diagram is not visible. Which option do I have to activate? I think and that you've forgotten to activate the sections here. To activate the sections here and also here to show you the results. Here in the results navigator, just activate the sections and show results values and also show generally the results and here for the members you have to activate the members here and m y okay and the last question is at the result, can I change only the orientation of shear forces without changing the orientation of bending moment? I understand. So here you want to have, here you see the shear forces and you want to change maybe the direction, I think. Yeah. I don't know if that's possible. But you can change the orientation of the member and then we will see how it will influence the shear stiffness, uh, the shear forces. So select this one. Say member orientation off, then you see here this member orientation. Right click and say reverse member orientation. Then you have to recalculate it. But yeah, the shear forces are now on the opposite side, of course. But the bending moment is on the right side. Because when you want to see maybe the tension, uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, Praxitelis, do you know the word for Zugfaser? Um, oh, wow. Um, bottom fibers, maybe? Ah, this, I think tension, this is one. Uh, tension fiber? Mm, tension fiber, ah. okay. I, I found it. So when someone is looking for the bottom of the tension fiber of a member, you can find it here in the display navigator. Go to the model 
and activate that bottom fiber and here you will see this fiber or the tension fiber of the member it will help for also for the study yeah good good then i would say i have some questions for you i have only one question for you better for you <laughs> please answer me that question Okay, good. Most of you have chosen. I close this window, show you the result. Yeah, what happens if the shear stiffness is activated? The right answer is the first one. Shear stiffness or shear deformations are considered. I think that's clear now. Good. So now I jump back to my PowerPoint presentation because I want to show you some, uh, some theory about the plate theory. So in the study, you learn, first of all, the beam elements or the normal beam theory, the calculation beam theory. And normally it is like that, that you learn the normal Bernoulli beam theory. So, but there's also an uh, um, opposite of that. It's the Timoshenko beam. So what is the Bernoulli theme? So first of all, there is the, the cross section. When I deform something, they remain in plane. And the cross section remain also perpendicular to the member axis. Yeah. I have also prepared a picture of later for that. And one important point is that we don't consider any shear deformations because our shear stiffness is also rigid. Yeah, this is uh, one thing you study, yeah, you will calculate in the study, you will start with that because it's easier to consider that, to calculate it. And also a lot of formula you use, they are similar to that, yeah, good. But there's also the Timoshenko beam and the Timoshenko beam uh, they are the same, yeah, the same things like here, the Bernoulli. So the cross section remain in plane and so on. But you consider shear deformation, and also the shear dis the shear stiffness is limited, so it isn't rigid anymore. So we get an additional shear deformation. You will see it here, okay? This WQ, and also more deformation. So here we see, okay, it remains in plane, perpendicular to the member axis. And here at the Timoshenko beam, we see, okay, we get an additional angle. In this case, and this is a gamma angle. So additional deformation. So this member theory, this beam theory, we can also transfer to the plate elements. So, um, on the left side, similar to the uh, Bernoulli beam, you have the Kirchhoff theory and also the reisner middle theory for the Kirchhoff theory. So here are some information, what we are referring to, what. So 
we have geometrical linear this means that we are looking just for a small deformation and linear elastic material law so we are using this hooks law and the cross sections remain flat so we have no warping no and also the constant thickness and also here no consideration of shear deformations rise and midline the four things are the same but similar to Timoshenko we consider shear deformation and we consider also transverse and lateral lateral strains what are transverse and lateral strains so imagine you have here a beam and you tie this beam with the help of some tension forces yeah and along his length it will get looking at this cross section at his width but also as well as his height thinner yeah and this is the transversal lateral strain here also with this mu vector it will provide this uh, lateral strain here okay good back to the plate theory when we transfer it transfer to the plate elements again so Kirchhoff as a summary no consideration of sheet deformations so when I calculate with this Kirchhoff theory these results are good enough for thin plates thin plates are normal concrete plates you use in the normal building structures and so on so yeah and you are considering just pure bending load bearing capacity yeah and this is also only a simplified approach otherwise oh sorry otherwise to the rise the midline here the results are good also for thin plates but also for thick plates and the component the component of the shear influence is relatively high so you have to consider these kind of shear deformations and when we would neglect this shear forces the arrows and the bad results would be very high and that's also the reason why we have a higher value approach and we get more accurate shear forces so as a summary Kirchhoff you can use just for thin plates yeah thin plates are normal concrete plates and so on and rise and midline you can use also for thin plates and for thick plates and my recommendation for you is please use always rise and midline because then you didn't then you don't make any mistake yeah so let's look also to our firm where we can do that <clears throat> so here under the calculate menu bar you will find this f image settings no sorry the calculation parameters and here you find the different plate bending theory Mindlin and Kirchhoff and now yeah, remember these values here I choose Kirchhoff calculate it again <clears throat> so and here you will see now the different results yeah so there is a difference and the greater the thickness of one plate is the greater is also the difference between these two calculation theories yeah my recommendation for you please use Reisner and Bindlin then you are all, always on the safe side good now let's jump to the next example and this is the Euler case one and the stability analysis of a frame so in the study you learn also the stability analysis a little bit buckling cases and so on and for sure also the Euler cases and 
we want to have the same here also with RFM. So what we do now is modeling this first column here with an clamped uh, with a clamped support here and the same also with this frame after that. Good. Now I would say let's go ahead and do that. So for that, please create a new model. I create here a new model by clicking here on new model here on the on this white sheet. I write the Euler case one, put it here to the examples. And now important point is here, the type of model should be 3D please, because we want to consider both directions concerning the buckling figures, pictures. So I want to activate here this 3D type of model and my Z axis is orientated downwards. Yeah, I, one of my projects are already existing, so I write there. Like this. Yeah, good. I have to take a sip of water. I'm a little bit thirsty. Good. So. As I said before, with RFM you can calculate not only plates, surfaces, surfaces and so on, but also frame structures. So we want to do that. So in order to do that, go here, click on new single member. And here I have the possibility to create a new cross section. I do that. And because I am from Europe or better, I'm from Germany, it's very common that we use here our HEB profiles. Yeah. So I click here on one of this HEB profile. When you don't have it here, click here on the material on the cross section library. It's the same. choose one of the rolled cross-sections and choose here HEB profile. It's a white I-beam with, um, yeah, it's a white I-beam, sorry, with parallel flanks. So here we have our flanks here on the web. It's especially used for transferring a lot of bending moments and also compression forces. And we choose this HEB profile 300. Click on OK. Again, I click on OK. On OK. And now I want to do this column 10 meters high. So, and now you will see I have a little bit problem because I use now the work plane in YX. You will see it here. Yeah, I have the different work planes now, but when I want to do that 10 meters high, it will not be possible because I referred also to this flat plane here. So one possibility is to change the work plane, like here, I can change the work plane and now I can draw my column 10 meters high. This is possible, but there's also another smarter solution in my opinion is that I set the length and direction so here I have this window. I set the length and direction perpendicular to my work plane. Set here the length, should be 10 meters high. And you will see here now also this uh, member here, but not to the positive Z direction, but into the opposite Z direction. I refer to my origin node here and click on OK. Now you see here this member. <clears throat> so, and now I want to 
add some supports here. So I select here the lower node, go to the symbol bar, click on new nodal support. And here I activate rigid. So all constraints and all displacements, all rotations are transferring to this support. You can see also here this support conditions. Yeah. When I have activated everything, um, it will look like that. Okay. But in this case, it's okay when I just activate here or I choose this rigid support here, click on okay. And this Richard will appear here. Good. Now, next thing is putting there some loads. So in order to do that, we have to add some load cases again. And yeah, for that, I click here on new load case. I don't consider the self weight. Just click here and test load. Doesn't matter what's the name of this load case is. Just put the load description and click on OK. Good. Now put there one new node load, so a single force. Enter here a value of 10 kilonewton. Click on OK. And this was the wrong node. Please draw it from there to there. OK, I made a mistake. Unfortunately, I want to add this single force here to that node. Just click here, new node load, put there a value of 100 kilonewton and refer to this node here. Good. Now, one important thing. <clears throat> Normally, the program calculates it by the theory of first order. So, when I look to the results, I change a little bit my view in order to see this a little bit better. So here go on view, reverse in y direction, and I see it here. So the displacement and uh, the deformation aren't interesting for me now. I for me is interesting the bending moments. So I have no bending moments. I think that's pretty clear. Now I add a horizontal force in the global x direction. So I put the 10, click on OK. I calculate it again. And then you will see, okay, now I have a bending moment. I think that's pretty clear because I have a lever arm of 10 meters, a horizontal force of 10 kilonewton, 10 multiplied by 10 is 100, and a normal force of 100 kilonewton. In this case, compression force because it's negative and so on. Good, I think that's pretty clear, yeah? But in our frame, we have the possibility to choose different calculation theories. So I go back, open the load cases and combinations. And when you go to calculation parameters, you will find the method of analysis. And normally the load cases are calculated by the geometrical linear analysis. But you have also the possibility to consider second order analysis. Maybe someone knows this under the name P delta, yeah? And 
I want to show you the different results concerning that because in Germany we have the second order analysis and also the geometrical linear analysis and when you consider that these two kind of calculation theories there are some differences yeah and I want just to show you the differences when I activate the second order analysis so First of all, we had compression force of 100 kilonewton and also an, an uh, bending moment of 100 kilonewton meter. Yeah, I think that was pretty clear. Now, with the help of the second order, you make a calculation after, so you make an, so you make the calculation. So you see the equal systems on a deformed structure. Yeah. So I calculate this again. And first of all, I want to show you the horizontal displacement. In this case, UX, remember this 68.7 millimeters. When you multiply this with 100, you will get an additional bending moment yeah, of 6.87 kilonewton meters. Now look to the bending moments. Here we have a total bending moment of 106.87 kilonewton meters because with the help of the second order, because there we make the, uh, the e equality I have to look it up, this word. Okay. Yeah, Google Translator is not so good. Um, you you build the equality, the equal system with the help in order to get your support internal forces and so on, the support directions at the deformed system and the, in, at the second order, yeah, or P delta. And when you have just the geometrical linear analysis you don't have you calculate this thing in the undeformed structure and also get this result at the undeformed structure and here we have the second order so the p delta and therefore you have additional bending moments due to this horizontal deformation this defo this horizontal deformation multiplied by this no, uh, vertical force will provide you this result at the bending moment and provides you additional bending moments. Yeah. So I want to show you that in different windows, maybe. Sorry, this one. So here I have the bending moment. Here I have the normal force. And here I have the shear forces. And when I look now here to the horizontal deformation, you will see, okay, this deformation multiplied by the, <clears throat> by the vertical force will provide me an additional bending moment of 106, uh, additional bending moment of 6.87 kilonewton meters. And the normal bending moments are this horizontal 10 kilonewton multiplied by the lever arm of 10 meters, and this will provide me this bending moment. And this is one thing I want to mention because I think this is very important also when you use RFM, especially when you use this second order. Good, so much to that. Good, now 
we want to make a st um, stability analysis, I put this horizontal force away. So I write that zero. I just have this vertical force. And now I want to make a stability analysis. What does it mean to make a stability analysis? I want to see different buckling cases and also to see the critical lengths. So I have to I have to start one of my add-on modules, in this case RF stability. RF stability, when I open this. You, it will open this window here and RFM stability is make a stability analysis by the eigenvalue method. So it will provide three, uh, critical lengths, also um, uh, critical values for this calculation of stability. So for that, I want to have this lowest eigenvalues. Number of eigenvalues should be four, not more. I refer to this load case, test load. And I want just to consider favor this. I don't want to consider, and I don't have also to activate minimal initial pre-stress. But one important thing is that we activate the division for straight members. So I added the F image settings for members, and there I have to modify it to 10. So the minimum number of member divisions should be 10. I click on OK. And now I click on OK just because uh, my load case, I forgot to change that. My load case would be calculated by the geometrical linear analysis, not by the second order. I explain it to you later. So now I open error stability again. Now I can calculate it. And the, <clears throat> the first thing, the first things you can see is on the left side this critical load factor, and on the right side this magnification 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 factor. Mm, the most important thing is the critical load factor. What does it stand for? This critical load factor says to me that I have to multiply the whole loads of 100 kilonewton by this factor in order to get an instabili instab uh, instability of the whole structure. So when I get this instability, the whole structure wouldn't calculate and will collapse. Yeah. So when I have this 100 kilonewton and I multiply this 100 kilonewton with this factor, of 4.4 so i get um i get a, a, a vertical force of 440 kilonewton and i calculate it with the help of the second order i will get an insta instability of the whole structure and my uh, structure would collapse due to this critical load factor yeah the magnification factor says to me the how with which factor I have to calculate, I have to multiply the bending moments in order to get my bending moment after the second tier, um, after, uh, to get my uh, moment in the second order. Good. Now to the effective lengths and critical loads. Here you see again this critical load. These are the 443 kilonewton. When I have more than this one, this one, 
my whole structure my whole structure would collapse yeah i will get an instability and my program wouldn't calculate that yeah and here i see also the different effective length factors and also the effective lengths these are these um, buckling uh, lengths here so when you consider this euler cases because we have here euler case one we have here also this effective effective length factors of two maybe someone of you asking or wondering okay why isn't it exact two this is also due to this here stiffnesses so but first of all let's look to this um, effective lengths and to the buckling uh, cases to the different eigenvectors so i click on graphic and here i see the first eigenvector or eigenform and when i when i want to have this a little bit nicer this view i go here go to the display uh, navigator and say okay here are the results i want that their members have colored cross sections and i think now you can imagine it a little bit better better so <clears throat> when i have here vertical forces just a single force what is the first eigenform of this cross section i think that's pretty clear the first eigenform is or the first buckling is that the profile is buckling around his own uh, around his weak axis and this weak axis is around his z axis i activate it here i click on that column i click here on local axis of members on and here you see the local axis so I have here the y axis and the z axis and along his length i have this x axis and the first buckling case is that this column here buckles around his weak axis and the weak axis in this is in this case the z axis i think that's pretty clear because my flanks are here in this direction that shows in the global x axis and the weak axis is in this direction i think that's pretty clear when we jump to the next uh, eigenvector the second this is a buckling around his strong axis yeah i think that's pretty clear here i have my flanks this is the strong side and here i have and critical load factor of almost 30. this would mean that i have that i would might uh, that i would multiply my 100 kilonewton with almost 13 then this would collapse around his strong axis yes and also some other um, eigenforms and so on good now i want to show you what happens when you when we have more than this 443 kilonewton so we have 100 kilonewton we activate the calculation parameters calculated by the second order analysis so the p delta and now we put there more than 443 in this case 444 kilonewton and we will get an error and we calculate again yeah and there is the and there is the error message the stiffness matrix is singular the model is unstable instability found in fe mission number yeah, and so on yeah and there is a possibility how you can do that yeah 
So this means that we have too much load on our structure. Good. And now when I put the 443, it would calculate because this is under our critical load. <clears throat> now when I jump to the RF stability, sorry, I have to calculate everything. I open RF stability and you see my critical load factor is now 1.001. Yeah. Okay. Some short information about this critical load factor. If this critical load factor is under one, yeah, so 0 0.9 or 0 0.8, then you will get an error message when you calculate your structure uh, by the second order, yeah? Mm, and yeah, and if you have here values of critical load factors between one and 10, you have to consider a calculation after the second order and everything over 10 is okay. You don't have to consider any second order. It's when you calculate in the Eurocode 3, so Eurocode 3 are, uh, uh, there you calculate steel structures, there you have to consider that. Okay, good. So much to the critical load factor. Good. Praxitelis, are there some questions? Uh, no, Daniel, no questions yet. So I think we can carry on. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So I have prepared two questions for you. First of all, this one. Okay, good. Let's see this result. So, of course, the plate theory of Kirchhoff considers no shear deformation. The plate theory of Risen and Midland does. And another question is that one.
Okay, good. Most of you have chosen. I close this poll, show you the results. Of course, the critical load factor says, okay, which factor can I use to increase load until my whole system will fail? Good. Okay, so the last example of this online training is modeling um, 2D frame structure. I show you here again this one. <clears throat> okay, good. For that, I copy just here this column. So I draw a selection window of that. Right click, say OK, move and copy. Number of copies, one, and the displacement vector should be 10 meters to the X direction. Click on OK. I deactivate the member axis now because I think that is clear now. And now I can change the height of this. I can change the height of this uh, columns here. When you want to change something afterwards, that's every time possible. Like here, for example, I want to change the height of these columns. I select the upper nodes here. Click on right click on one of this node. Yeah, sorry. Click one of these here nodes, say, OK, edit node. And because the nodes have the same coordinates, the coordinate Z will appear. And here you can change it now. And we change it here to minus six meters. I click on OK. And now I want to model a girder from there to there. For that, I decide to create a new cross section. So I click here on new single member. I create here a new cross section from the member start. And I take this IPE profile. IPE profiles are very popular for using um, uh, for, for using especially as girders and beams when you get some a lot of bending moments because they are very yeah ch cheaper to produce than these bigger HEB H profiles here. Okay, I choose here this IPE 300 profile. Click on OK. Click again on OK. And draw this girder from there to there. So from the left side to the right side. With the right click or escape, I close this window. And I have here now a frame. Good. And I look back to my load case. So I jump there to the load case. And I copy now this single load from one corner to the other corner by pressing, uh, by drag and drop. So again, I click on one of this, I click on that single force, press my control key on the keyboard and copy it from the left side to the right side. Now I want to change the values. So I select them in by drawing a selection window from the right to the upper left side. Right click on the force, click on edit nodal load. And here I say, okay, I want to have 100 kilonewton. Okay.
now I say again, okay, calculate all, please. And now we look to the different, now we look to the different um, buckling cases. Okay, now jump back to the RF stability. And here we see the first eigenvector, the second, and the third, third, and then the fourth. Okay, so what we can see now. The first one is out of the plane. We can make the factor a little bit bigger, the displacement, uh, the display factor, yeah. So on the first, Buckling is out of the plane. The second, also. And when you compare it to real structures, this shouldn't be possible. This, this is one of the main things. We as structural, analyst, uh, structural engineers, we don't want that kind of that frame should have this buckling case because this is not very good. And that's also the reason why we have there continuous beams, yeah. And these continuous beams will halt this whole structure, yeah. I can show you that also to a real hall, for example. I click here and the project manager. I have maybe there somewhere. Nice example, yeah, for example here. And yeah, in order not to have this kind of buckling case, we are we have here also this continue continuous beams here, and they will halt this frame here in one plane. Yeah. But here in this case, we don't have this. Yeah, and this is also the reason why this will fail at first. This uh, the third eigenvector is that vec uh, is that buckling case or that eigenform that's very familiar because this is maybe something what we already seen maybe in our study or something like that. Yeah, I think that is pretty clear. And in order to get this at, as the first buckling case or as first eigenvector, we have to consider the right boundary conditions. So we can add there some additional nodal supports. And then we don't have this kind of, then we don't have this kind of, um, buckling form or eigenform, yeah? So let's do that. I take new nodal support. And what we have to do now is that we have, that we don't allow any deformation in the Y direction. So I click on new nodal support, click here on new type of nodal support. I activate only the UY because I want, I don't want to have any deformation in the Y direction. So I have to activate this UY. I click on OK. Again on OK. I select this node here. I select this node here. Now watch out what we have now for eigenforms. I calculate everything. Yeah, and now my first eigenvector is this one I wanted to have. Huh? So I think this is pretty clear now, but now you see, okay, I have again some backlinks, buckling forms out of the plane along this column, yeah? So, in order 
to in order not to have this again i can change the system from 3d to 2d to 2d i show you the difference so go to data go here to the data navigator to the uh, the right project click with the right click on general data and change that type of model to 2d xz then this window will appear and you say do you really want to change the type of model you say yes and now you have just this one plane and also this boundary conditions are a little bit different because now it can be possible that this frame can deform out of this plane so let's look to this rf stability again to the results no support of restraint mm -hmm. no problem because now we have done there any supports at the node yeah and now we have here the first eigenvector and the three other ones are just in the plane yeah this is something you have to consider good yeah praxitalis I I I I think I am I am at the end of this online training. Do you want to add some information or do you want to mention something? Mm, yes, Daniel. Um, okay, as uh, we got we've got no questions. I would like to um, show that uh, context menu maybe show them how it works uh, when we draw a selection window over a uh, over an element. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do you want to show do you want to show you that or should I show Oh that? yes of course I can do that. Yeah sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I give you the right to do that. Mm -hmm. So let's skip the screen. Okay, so do you see my screen now? Yes, we see your screen. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, I would like to uh, show you that uh, little, um, to give you a little tip here. Um, when we draw a selection window, like this, for example, and then right click, you can see here on the uh, context menu, uh, all elements that are selected in this window. So if we, for example, want to edit only the notes, you can, go here to notes and click edit. So now you can edit all these notes that are selected in that window uh, at once. Um, I could show maybe Daniel uh, the uh, new flight mode maybe as well. Yeah, of course, of course, show that. Uh, okay, so we've got a new super cool uh, feature uh, which is called flight mode. You can press on your keyboard uh, shift plus F and now with your mouse you can uh, rotate and with uh, with the arrows you can fly through or walk walk through uh, your model i think uh, then you can adjust the pace too of course you can adjust uh, the pace with the plus and minus or was it plus and minus keys yeah exactly okay so you can um, you can adjust your pace uh, with uh, plus for example make it faster and uh, fly or walk through your model if you want to see something okay um, and maybe the uh, clipping tool as well you can go here uh, under if you if you got um, any results for example let me show you this real quick my loads are in german but that's another problem, problem, I think. Okay, so if you got your uh, results here on your model, you can go here under, um, where was it, Daniel? View or? 
um, yeah, insert. Insert, exactly. Uh, on your clipping plane, and now you, you've cut through your model and, and you can see your uh, results at that exact uh, line, that exact cut. And uh, of course, you can uh, adjust here uh, the offset or the step, make it bigger, for example. And of course, the angle too. Change here the plane or XY, for example, and view your results. Okay. Um, anything else, Daniel, maybe I could show? Mm, no. So for the attendees, when you have now some questions, please um, write your questions. We I have now time to answer all of these questions. And yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, this is the model which we will show in uh, part two. Hey, exactly. Um, we will show you step by step how to model it and put loads on it. And yeah, this will be a good guide, I think, to uh, your first steps in uh, RFM. Exactly. Good. Um, I switch to my screen now, Praxitalis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Good. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. We've got some questions. Will be will we be able to rewatch this uh, webinar? Yes, of course. Um, we will post it on our website, and you will get after this online training an email and in this email you will find the link to the recording and also uh, the link to the materials and models and also a certificate concerning this training. Mm -hmm. And we've got another question too. Uh, how can we calculate the uh, buckling length uh, using the stability module? Mm -hmm. Concerning the buckling length, I show it here again. So, open the RF stability, stability analysis, go to the program. And here at the area of effective lengths and critical loads, you will find the different members. So here in this case, <clears throat> member number one. And when you go and look to the right eigenvector number, you will find the effective lengths. And these are also the different buckling lengths. Yeah? And when, when I do it again with, the, with this Euler case one, here we have normally a buckling length of, okay, this is now six meters multiplied by two, so the double time, so we have a buckling length of 12 meters. I calculate it again. Sorry, I have, okay. So. And when I jump to the RF stability, and when you go to uh, the effective lengths, you see here the effective length factor of two, yeah? So two, when I multiply two by six, so this is the length, I have this effective length of 12 meters, yeah? and and when you ask yourself, okay, why isn't it so clear? So why why isn't that exactly two? This is because of this um, stiffness, shear stiffness. So I go back to calculate, calculation parameters. When I don't consider the shear stiffness, so I deactivate that. I 
calculate everything again and then you will see the exact value of that Yeah, let's look to the results. And now you will find the clear value of 12 and 2, because this is all a case one, and there we have the effective length factor of 2. OK. Good. The another question is, if we divide the element, the buckling length will be calculate, calculated also. Yeah, that's right. You will get the buckling length to each member number. So if you divide here this length again, you will get it per member. Yeah. So you have to consider that. There will be some different results. So when I uh, when I divide here the member exactly at the half, now I calculate it again. you have to consider now different critical length because here you have now one and three so member as so a member number one and two and here now effective length is four but the effective length is 12 yeah but you have a different critical uh, effective length sector this is something you have to consider good next question Uh, next is, uh, sorry, uh, whether we can export or import member locations uh, to and from Excel, uh, to or from an Excel sheet. Yeah, that's possible. Here in the tables, you have the possibility to export or import a table. And when you want to import some of your members, you can do that here by members. Yeah, the, the Excel sheet should have the same structure as is as here in RFM. Oh, but that's possible you can import and export the tables here that's possible another question i see why we restrict the eigennotes to four what will happen if we take more yeah i can show you um, maybe so what happens if we do more so first of all, I uh, I referring again to the type of model to a three D. I delete this uh, support direction there. Delete also this node by the help of delete node, but merge joint lines members together. I make this 10 meters high. Okay. Now my load is still there. I calculate everything again. And yeah, the reason why I, I want to have just four is that when you do a stability analysis, also referring to a design standard like the Eurocode 3, they only the first cases are important for your design because when you when you have here the area of stability this would be the first fail if you have if you would have too much nodal forces here yeah the second fail would be that 
and the other fails, like three and four, they wouldn't mm, they wouldn't appear because this is too unrealistic. Yeah. So this is also the reason why a structural engineer looks only the first two, three, four eigenvectors. I think at this simple structure is very clear, but if you have um, a more complex structure, then you should look maybe to more than one or two eigenvectors because there can be some local problems or some global problems. When you ha would have, maybe I can show you it here. Or, no, this is a wrong, this is a bad example. Maybe another example. Maybe this one would be interesting. So, are there some loads? There are some loads. Okay, let's make a structural a, a stability analysis at that case. Yeah. So, I open RF stability. Sure. Okay. I open error stability, I take load case. I consider here. And 10, okay. Calculate it. Show me the graphics. Yeah, and the reason is because I have here this one. Now I'll calculate it again. Sorry for that because I I have this one, the term and eigenvector for unstable model, but I think this model isn't unstable. Show me the graphics. Okay, and here we can see some interesting things. So, okay, here we can see this eigenvector, and here we can see, okay, the Deformation in the y direction is a global problem. And there, I think there are some joints problem because it shouldn't be like that. Yeah. And when we look to other, maybe other eigenvectors, okay, then we see, okay, there's also deformation in that positive y direction or negative y direction. And we can look also to some local problems but I think there are just some uh, global problems. But it can be possible that one column is maybe too weak, and this would mean that we have there a local problem. And the first reason when the when one column should be too weak, that we increase the size of the cross-section of that. This would be maybe one solution to do that. So this is also, this would be helpful to look to more than one or two eigenvectors. Okay, good. Next question. Um, yes, Daniel, we had a question recently. Um, if we could show how to perform a load combination, I don't know if you want to show it now or perhaps in a next training. So this will be part of the next training, but I can show you that very fast. So, very very fast so i create uh, here for that example and second load case in this case yeah test load two but into another action category in this case impost click on ok now i put there an additional nodal force in this case, 200, yeah. And then I create a new load case. 
we do it now manually the next training so the second part we can we do it man, uh, automatically so i sorry i jump here to the load combinations i create here a new load combination give them the name okay design internal forces and put both to that the different partial factors are here i click on okay and when you look now to the load combination you see here there's 300 and 135 and this is a load combination yeah okay next question okay. maybe mm -hmm. um okay uh how are we how do we check uh sorry i'm not quite understanding the question okay how do we check if the joint of member is okay and how are we designing it mm -hmm. okay so first of all the checking of nodes if that's okay you have here the possibility to make a possibility check this function allows you okay if the whole structure is modeled okay yeah also here under the tools you have here the model check and here you can see for example if you have identical nodes so two nodes on one on the one exactly same place and also some other things like overlapping members lines and so on this is one thing one way or sorry two ways to check the model uh, the nodes and also the system and designing joints or connections you have to use one of our add-on modules in this case when you consider steel structures you have to use where is it rf joints design of joints this would be uh, the add-on module for designing joints here yeah okay next question mm -hmm. um, is uh, rf stability a general a general add-on for concrete steel and timber structures and if so, uh, what do the air, uh, RF timber and other than that? Uh, if so, what does RF timber do? Mm, yeah, so RF stability is an add-on module. That's right. Mm, when you, there are different design possibilities to, to make the stability analysis concerning concrete steel and timber structures and maybe in the steel structures there is I don't know the, the English word I have to open it mm, there is one possibility to make a um, stability analysis with the help of the equivalent member method yeah and to do that you know you have to know the buckling lengths and the buckling lengths you can calculate with the help of rf stability and the same also with timber structures yeah here are the rf timber i think you have similar way to consider that here effective lengths members you can put there the effective lengths you calculate it with the help of rf stability but normally you have to put it here manually yeah but you can add that also here with the help of rf stability that's possible
yeah you can do that <clears throat> okay next question and maybe also the last question i would say mm -hmm. um okay uh if i have to give a wind load which direction i need to select first local load related to true member length or global load related to true member left, uh, length mm -hmm. um, I, I think the best way to show that is to show that in an ex already existing project. So I open maybe <clears throat> this one. Okay, so um, in this case, I choose here, I create a new load case. In this case, this will be a, a load, a wind load. And they are similar, there are several ways to put their load. For example, when I have to consider suction, yeah, or compression forces concerning the wind loads, I have to do it like that. So, first of all, mm, new member load because these are only members. I constant I put the the wind loads, so I refer to the local related to true member length. And in this case, when I have to consider the suction or the wind pressure, at the value, when I ha want to consider the compression wind or wind compression, I have to add the, the positive value. And when I want to consider a suction of the wind forces, negative because it relates to the local orientated z axis. Yeah, this would be uh, the wind load. Yeah. And when I have, when I want to consider snow loads, for example, I have to consider this kind of, um, this kind of member load. This would be the global related to true member length. Sorry, this one to the projected member length. This would be the snow load. And this is a little bit different to the to the self weight. Yeah. If you have some loads on the roof, this is a little bit different. Okay. Good. Then Okay, good. Um Okay, then I would say, uh, let's finish this training. I want to add some small information about our website. Yeah. Here in our website, you find a lot of information, especially for you as you know, as beginners or for interesting, interesting people. Here at support and learning, you find here at learning the first steps with RFM and uh, Airstop and so on. Also, if you have any questions concerning every topic, you can ask us without a support contract or something like that. You can ask us everything. Yeah. For that, we are here. And what I can really recommend is models to download. If you go there, you can model. Uh, you can download a lot of uh, a, a lot of models from do uh, modeled with our software, and 
if you stay a little bit longer on one of these pictures, you can scroll, you can move it a little bit, you can watch it. This is really nice and you can download everything. Yeah. What I can really recommend is also here, the education and e-learning. Here we have our online course, RFM5 for beginners. It's very, it's really helpful. This is a series uh, with 11 videos. There you can check your knowledge and so on and learn a lot of things. And yeah, you can here also download a free 90 day trial and so on. Yeah. Good. Then I would say, let's finish this online training. It was mm -hmm. a, what a lot of fun. It was very really happy, and I hope we will see you on Friday, like as a following Friday, because there is the second part of our online training. Mm -hmm. So um, I would also like to thank you all. It was um, good fun. I hope you had fun too, and uh, learned something. And hopefully, hopefully we will uh, see each other again on uh, Friday. Okay, guys. So, okay, so have a nice week. Have a nice week. Have a nice day, and stay healthy. So, bye bye. Okay, bye.